The latest chapters of Jojo Lands have been really interesting to me because this new stand, Bag's Groove, reminds me a lot of the wonder of you. And I know you might be thinking this is a bit of a reach or a jump because it's a similar type of stand, doesn't necessarily mean that it should remind me of it, but I think that Araki might have done this on purpose. So as our main cast investigates and gets the information out of this government facility, all of a sudden Usagi gets really sick, which eventually leads to Charming Man Edragona getting sick as well, infected with this stand that, no joke, literally gives people cancer. Obviously we've had disease-based stands before, Purple Haze is literally one of the main character stands in part 5, but having this be an antagonistic stand with these very small, croscopic based stands, a lot of people said that it reminded them of Lovers from part 3, and I completely agree with that as well. So the main antagonist at this point in the story is seemingly building up to be Howler, this massive land ownership company that owns a lot of the land in Hawaii, and they are shrouded in mystery. The only other person outside of those three to get infected with this stand was the woman that assisted them in the government facility. And I found this really interesting because they're determining that this has to be some heart attack issue, which makes sense. The stand being very small is affecting the insides of our main characters here. But what someone says at the end of the chapter, in my opinion, was really interesting. So, uh, that woman, she's the daughter of that congressman, right? The one going after the illegal activities regarding water sources on Howler Company's land? Oh yeah, that's right. Her father's a politician. And in the first line of the next chapter, following up that entire setup, is the unending pursuit begins. And obviously, when you think about pursuit, you think about the wonder of you. But it's a lot more than just the pursued thing. It's more about what the wonder of you is sort of meant to represent. A secret society that the TG University Hospital was running for the rock humans. And what do you know it? Our main characters are now all within a hospital having to deal with the ramifications of Howler. And obviously, I don't need to say anything, but that's kind of where the wonder of you was fought in its entirety, so I mean, hey, before you get the idea that I'm alluding to rock humans, just know I'm not. I'm not alluding to rock humans being present in this whatsoever, even more so now that we know that Charming Man's stand is not related to him being a rock human whatsoever. It's just some unique ability that is similar to what Dr. Wu was able to do. So with that, I want to get into the interesting connections between the TG University Hospital scheme and what Howler could be doing right now. The stand being a sort of pawn of Howler activated after people are pursuing them when they investigate these deeds has a very similar ring to it as when Toru is being investigated. If anyone is curious what exactly is up with him or the head doctor, they're going to get attacked. Some characters were able to just look at Toru or the head doctor and be attacked, meaning it's more so curiosity about who they are versus what exactly they are up to. And one thing I find really interesting is that both of these stands attack almost indiscriminately, with the Wonder of You attacking some of its own allies, and it doesn't have a specific cause that it causes. And with this stand attacking some people that were completely uninterested in the actual contents of the thing that Howler was trying to protect. With this unnamed stand, we have a lot of these characters getting the exact same disease. Overall, I really like this little connection here. I love the TG University Hospital mystery being cemented into Howler at the very, very beginning. It makes them a very substantial threat in my opinion. The big themes of what the Jojo Lands is about really can be summarized with what Howler is seemingly built up to be. I like this a lot because Howler owns the land. They're the people who are so rich that they don't even have to worry about any of the people living within it because they could just take it away from them. And as we see at the end of this chapter, we know that there is some illegal activity already going on in these places, but because they're already in charge, they make the rules. And I definitely think it's possible for Bags Groove's user, this little girl right here, to be related to Howler because of her exact viewpoint of humans as a whole. She doesn't really care about any of the people that get affected by her stand because she views it as some sort of inevitability that this sort of thing will happen. A mindset, in my opinion, that's really similar to Toru and how he viewed Calamity. Something bad would have happened eventually, so what does it matter that it's happening now versus later? The outcome is the same regardless, and I feel like this girl being so young even makes her more threatening than Toru because Toru obviously being hundreds of years old makes him seem as though he doesn't care 
at all because he's so old. But this little girl being so young means she must have been born into some sort of system that truly doesn't care about anyone. Now, obviously, you could theorize that this girl is a rock human. I don't believe that. But you get what I'm saying. It shows the way that she's been raised has been really, really, truly disturbed for her to think this way, even though she's so young. One of the major themes and motifs of this part so far is that when you have enough power, you can make the rules of whatever it is you have power over. It's the main theme of the Jojo lands. That's what Jojo's goal is. He wants to make the mechanism that allow him to make a place where what he wants to happen can happen. So it makes a lot of sense in my opinion that there are people who are seemingly built up to be the main villain who already have that in place. This is a major reason why I believe the police are going to be a major antagonistic force in this part. Obviously, outside of these guys being criminals as our main protagonists, it would just make sense. But Iraqi taking it in this direction I think is really interesting. We're already getting the idea of the people in charge of the police, in charge of the government itself because of privately owned land developments, they could do whatever they want on there. I do think it's very, very powerful how we have this wealth gap. Again, the wonder of you being owned by doctors and really, really rich people with tons of investors having the capability to do whatever they want because the stand will just kill them anyway. And then Howler, able to just kill people who have any interest in them whatsoever. All of these people at the end of this chapter are slowly approaching the government building where Howler's deed was. If they approach it further, are they going to get infected? I'm not entirely sure, but I think it is definitely possible that this could be the outcome of these characters. The wonder of you being ridiculously strong is a really cool contrast to this stand, which is seemingly really weak, but actually very deadly because it's able to just completely incapacitate someone. And obviously a disease causing stand is crazy, but to the normal person, this would look completely fine. And if this did happen to people like Jodio and his group, they probably wouldn't even bat an eye because it would have been depicted as drug usage, which is something that Charming Man says at the beginning of this chapter. People not caring about those who are poor in society versus Howler getting away with these ridiculously absurd things because they're so rich. Again, this wealth gap, really, really interesting. And I think there's a lot Iraqi can grab onto from this concept alone. This could easily just be another automatic pursuit type of stand, like Jodio says here. But in my opinion, with all the thematic connections between the Wonder of You and the hospital, and this stand and Howler, I could easily see that this is a sort of re-emergence of this idea. Araki has been known to do these type of plot lines very often in the parts where the first section of the new part calls back to the last section of a previous part. One of the most prominent examples of this is the fact that Dio is obviously the main antagonist of part 1, and Strizo is the first antagonist of part 2, someone who's aware of everything Dio was capable of doing and improved upon that. I feel as though this is something that could be what is shown here through these stands. Obviously, I don't think that Howler has any awareness of the rock humans, because I don't personally believe the rock humans are going to be a part of this part. It could still be the case. Overall, I think that Araki could be retreading on this idea to see how Jodio would interact with a stand like this versus Josuke. Something to help differentiate these two characters really, really particularly. And I think that would make a lot of sense. The Wonder of You is the longest arc in Jojo ever. It's a massive section of the series as a whole. So having this character go against an opponent similar to it, but showing the different outcomes that he had versus Josuke would be a really great way of differentiating him from every Joestar, but particularly the Joestar that many people have followed for the last decade. These are our first seemingly truly antagonistic foes that we're going to be against, not some animals or someone who becomes an ally. These guys seem like they could be a big deal with Bag's Groove's user being really intimidating, even though she's so young, and being paired with someone who seemingly is either a cop or a detective or a PI or something. I think there's a lot of potential here, especially because it's more likely than not that the cop also has a stand because he's aware of a stand because this girl's so blatantly talking about her own. I think there's a lot of potential there. Could this girl be connected to someone really important in Howler, since it's her stand that's the one that's connected to the deeds? And if that's the case, why is this guy babysitting her 
and what is his connection to Hauser. Overall, I'm immensely excited to see how this arc pans out, like our new villains we have set up, like a lot of the drama that's been set up, and somehow we've already solidified the idea that Howler's land is going to be sold and investigated by the government. It seems like a lot of the story is super fast paced, so I'm curious to see how these characters sort of throw a wrench in Jodeo's plans. What do you think is going to happen with the Bag's Groove arc? Let me know down below. Hope you enjoyed. Take care and have a good one.